If Sjogren's syndrome is reversible, why aren't more doctors talking about it? This video is all about debunking myths surrounding Sjogren's care and recovery. We're gonna talk about the top four reasons why Sjogren's syndrome patients don't get the help that they need to reverse their conditions for good. Hi, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri, board certified surgeon specializing in reversing immune inflammation caused by gut microbiome dysfunction. Over the past 13 years, I've seen thousands of success stories from patients and clients who were able to rid themselves of inflammation for good. We've had people around the world in every time zone utilize the knowledge and protocols from our coaching program and clinic to achieve amazing results and reverse Sjogren's syndrome inflammation for good. This video will dive into some very important information that's often left out of discussions about Sjogren's syndrome. We'll also go into the top four reasons why this knowledge isn't widely known. Number one, doctors still blame genetics. This is what I call the knowledge gap. Studies have shown that gut microbiome dysfunction is a major trigger for the inflammation seen in conditions like Sjogren's syndrome. This 2022 study identifies distinct gut microbiome and metabolic changes in primary Sjogren's syndrome, highlighting an increase in pro-inflammatory bacteria and altered amino acid and lipid metabolism, which contribute to disease progression and intestinal damage. And this other 2021 study examines the role of microbiome dysbiosis in primary Sjogren's syndrome, highlighting its impact on epithelial barriers, immune activation, and autoimmune processes. There's also research papers that highlight how different factors like diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise can significantly influence inflammation in Sjogren's syndrome. Here's a 2024 study that explores how three women with Sjogren's syndrome adopted a plant-based nutritional protocol emphasizing leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, and omega-3 fatty acids. Remarkably, nearly all the symptoms resolved within weeks. And this other 2024 study explored the impact of sleep, exercise, and depression on primary Sjogren's syndrome, finding that poor sleep is common and linked to fatigue and depression, emphasizing the importance of treating depression and providing proper exercise guidance to improve patient outcomes. Despite these many papers, most doctors still focus on genetics as the primary factor in Sjogren's syndrome. It's as though genes alone determine the outcome. But here's the thing, most people with Sjogren's syndrome had the same genes before their symptoms appeared. So what changed? Reality is that while genetics can play a role, bacterial genomics, the DNA of the bacteria in your gut, has a far greater impact. This is a concept I regularly teach in our membership course, and here's a preview. Even though there are dozens of human genes, recall that I said that these genes could be turned on and off depending on how you behave and respond to triggers. And what are these environmental triggers? These environmental triggers are diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise, the big five. The typical story we hear from most doctors is that genetics cause inflammation, but let me add to this story. Every cell in the body has a nucleus, which contains DNA. This DNA provides the recipe book for various functions in the body, including inflammation. So the genes are the recipe book of sorts. And if you take this recipe book to, let's say, a bakery, they make scones. If you take it to a cafe, they may make soup. So the same recipe book in different parts of the body provides the instructions for different things. So external influences greatly impact what gene recipes are being used in each cell. So this leads to two very important points. One, just because you have a gene, it doesn't mean it's always turned on. In fact, it can remain off until the right time. Second, not every cell in the body uses every gene. The important takeaway here is that whether or not you have quote unquote good genes or bad genes that cause inflammation, they're not always on. You have the ability to control them. But what you need to learn is how. And that's where many doctors fall short. They don't tell you how. They're so quick to blame genetics and prescribe medication that they don't think for a second that perhaps there's a way to control whether a gene is turned on or off. And that's precisely what we're gonna teach in this course. Okay, now would be a good time to mention, so far we've been talking about human genes, and that can be turned on and off. But remember that our body is also host to billions of microbes. These microbes harbor their own sets of DNA, which can cause inflammatory metabolites. Some of these microbes help us, but some of them harm us. And the correct balance is what we seek. Believe it or not, if we take the sum total of all the genes in our body, only 1% is actually human. 
The other 99% come from bacteria and other microbes, mostly living in our intestines and airways. For the people that like to blame genetics, you may not even have terrible genetics. Your genetics may be just fine. You may just have a bacterial imbalance, and that's what's causing a significant problem. Again, this is another thing that most doctors don't talk about. And here, you have ever-changing ratio of good versus bad bacteria. So let me give you a few examples. We've seen this with depression. We've seen it with obesity. We've seen this with IBS. We see it with inflammatory bowel disease and other autoimmune conditions such as lupus, rheumatoid, MS, psoriasis, eczema, and chronic allergies. In each of these conditions, bad bacteria plays a significant role. So you have to get rid of them and replace them with good bacteria. Doctors don't fix the microbiome. Doctors don't even know which imbalances are relevant. I'm gonna make this pretty simple. Microbiome imbalances cause inflammation. We know this because 80% of the immune system is in the gut and there are trillions of bacteria, viruses, funguses, and immune cells all interacting to produce inflammation. But here's the problem. Doctors don't fix the microbiome. At least currently, doctors fall into a couple different categories. There are ones that don't even think the microbiome even plays a role in Crohn's disease inflammation. There are GI doctors that know the microbiome plays a role, but don't know what types of imbalances are actually relevant. And then there are ones that sometimes test for imbalances, but cannot predict cause and effect. So therefore they use generic probiotics to fix them. And then there are ones like me who have studied the plasmid level DNA characteristics and phenotypic responses of individual subspecies of bacteria and carefully chose ones that actually move the needle on Crohn's disease inflammation. The gut microbiome recalibration needs to be precise and evidence-based, not random and haphazard. It also needs to take into account individual subspecies within a group of bacteria that actually have the genetic plasmids to solve inflammation. Just because a gut microbiome test say you have dysbiosis or overgrowth or leaky gut doesn't mean you just blindly replace the strains that are low. And in fact, that strategy never works. And I get people calling me all the time asking me how to fix these imbalances the right way. Number two, doctors don't know about the healing power of phytonutrients for Sjogren's syndrome. Phytonutrients are vital for managing Sjogren's syndrome, but what exactly are they and why are they so important? When we create a phytonutrient focused diet for our clients, we take into account their individual nutrition needs and any other medical conditions that might interact with herbal medicines or supplements. Just because something is trending online doesn't mean it's effective or even safe. Our goal is to limit reliance on unnecessary supplements and instead emphasize getting essential nutrients, including superfoods, through diet. Micronutrients such as vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients are the foundation of this approach. Macronutrients including carbs, fats, and proteins are equally critical. Balancing these nutrients properly each day can help resolve metabolic challenges and reduce inflammation linked to Sjogren's syndrome. However, getting these ratios wrong can also slow down healing. That's why carefully addressing these variables is so important. And I've created a video on the ideal diet for Sjogren's syndrome, so don't forget to check it out on this channel. Number three, and this is an important one, doctors and rheumatologists don't have the time needed to successfully coach patients. How many of you have gone to the doctor and they're in and out in about 15 minutes and all they do is talk about ordering tests, prescribing medications, and referring you to consultations? Where's the conversation about diet, digestion, sleep, stress, exercise, trauma, supplements, or lifestyle changes? It's not there. Our clinic's coaching program, the process is completely different. During the first few weeks, we communicate with each coaching client 200 to 300 times on average. This level of care and dedication is something you simply won't find at a typical doctor's office. We track everything, symptoms, food, sleep, weight, exercise, even bowel movements and poop every single day. And this attention to detail is crucial for addressing Sjogren's syndrome. Each single factor matters, and missing even one important piece of the puzzle could hold you back from recovery. The reality is most medical systems aren't designed for this level of care. Doctors don't have time. They see you briefly, order some tests, medications, and then ask you to come back in a few months. This is why so many people with Sjogren's syndrome remain stuck. Doctors often assume it's impossible to reverse Sjogren's inflammation, but the truth is it can be done. 
Number four, over-reliance on medication and the underappreciation of side effects and alternatives. Doctors and rheumatologists rely heavily on research studies to guide treatment for Sjogren's syndrome. These randomized controlled trials, considered the gold standard in medical research, are incredibly expensive, often costing millions of dollars to conduct. Pharmaceutical companies are the primary funders of large-scale Sjogren's trials because they have a financial stake. And if a medication is proven effective, it can be marketed, patented, and sold exclusively for years. So let me be clear, I'm not against pharmaceuticals, Medications play a critical role in managing Sjogren's syndrome and have significantly improved many lives. My concern is about how treatment information is conveyed to doctors and patients. The therapies that succeed in clinical trials receive most of the attention while other options are often overlooked. Natural remedies, dietary changes, probiotics, and herbal approaches rarely have the financial support for large-scale trials. And this lack of funding leaves them out of the conversation totally. When's the last time you saw a commercial promoting a healthy food for Sjogren's? In some cases, even discussing these alternatives is restricted due to limited formal evidence. I've seen colleagues labeled as spreading misinformation or talking about natural approaches. While protecting patients from misinformation is important, this cautious stance has often stifled open discussion about effective alternatives. And it's not about bad intentions. Everyone's trying to help patients, but the belief that medication is the only or best solution for Sjogren's syndrome is deeply embedded in a medical culture. It makes it harder for other effective therapies to gain recognition. And as a Western trained surgeon, I've used medications and surgeries to help people. I have also believed that there's other effective ways to manage and reverse Sjogren's approaches that are undervalued in the medical community. Okay, I hope this video has helped clarify these points. I know how frustrating it can be when your doctor or rheumatologist doesn't provide information about alternative solutions. That's why I offer discovery calls to help answer questions and explore the best option for each individual. If you or someone you know is struggling with Sjogren's syndrome, invite them to watch this video. It might help them take the first step towards relief and recovery. Lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Dr. Chanu Dasri with the Mind Gut Immune Clinic, and I'll see you next time.